I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Chrysler Pacifica. Pinnacle all wheel drive without launch control. Not bad. Horsepower and torque. 287 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque from a 3.6 liter V6. It'd be nice if it was a V8, eh? It would be really nice, but it is all wheel drive, so we did hook up off the line. Yeah, that was nice. And there are hybrid versions of this, but we have the all wheel drive version for my long term tester because I'm a dad, you're a dad, and now we're getting these cars for longer so we can test them out for kids stuff. Yeah, kids stuff. Fam kids are the best. Kids slash family stuff. Yes. yes. And the reason I wanted a minivan for my long-term tester was because I grew up in a minivan, a Plymouth Voyager. You grew up in a minivan, a Mercury Villager. Yeah, I had a really good time in a minivan. So it's nice to finally be able to like haul my family around in one. And I'm so sick of SUVs. I just want the full on dad experience. Like how great is this for hauling stuff around, Jacob, compared to SUVs? It is so easy to put things in every section of this vehicle. We have the doors on the sides. We have the trunk. We've got the stow and go. Where do you want to start with this? Okay. I think the seats. First of all, they look so premium. If you just saw these seats without the branding of the vehicle, you might think this was like a Bentley. So this is the pinnacle version, which is the highest trim, and it definitely feels like that in here. It's like a really, really nice couch. Yeah, the color of it is fantastic. Very rich. And then moving on to the middle row, we've got two seats that can go forward and back, but they do not stow and go into the bottom, but we do have the compartments below the front. And we also have lumbar pillows. What yes. kind of minivan comes with lumbar pillows? Oh, fancy minivan. Yeah. Anyways, it's very comfortable in the middle row, very good for your child seats. I think everyone was telling me, put the child seat on the passenger side so when you park, you can take it out easily without having to like go into oncoming traffic. That makes sense. And then moving on to the very back row, we have totally enough room for us to sit as adults. Yeah, it's really comfortable back there regardless of your height. And we do have peasant blockers in every row back there. But I do have a criticism for the third row peasant blockers. They're a little bit narrow. They don't cover the full window. But we do have a moon roof and then we have a back sunroof as well. But the back back sunroof is a manual operation one. Then those back seats can stow and go. But behind those seats, if they're up normally, we have such a nice little compartment that comes out. Like you could fit so much stuff behind the third row with like a full amount of people. And you can actually fold those rear seats with power buttons, which is really nice. So we should probably fold those seats down and box test. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21. Full pull, good job minivan. Close. Come on. Get your own minivan at patreon.com slash the straight pies. Okay, and then we also have TV screens behind the driver and passenger. So we've got all those built in games and stuff. Uh, our newborns are very newborn, so they can't play checkers, but we played checkers once against each other and it was pretty entertaining. Yeah, when uh, press trips were a thing, we were hauled around in one of these and we were actually playing games against each other, which was great. And then you got remotes, headsets, you can play Blu-rays, DVDs, I think, all that kind of stuff. Hook up some N64. It's pretty much ideal for just everything you need to do if you don't mind the look of being in a minivan. And there's no ads like there was on the Honda minivan, which you actually had to play ads to use all this, the games and stuff on the system. Oh, there's something weird about that. Yeah. But you know what? That had VTEC. And you know what this doesn't have? No VTEC, no power. Oh, that was a lot of lag. There's a lot of lag on that downshift. It's like really not satisfying. No, no. This is, this is below dad fast, like well below dad fast. Yeah. And then with the seats, there's another fun addition. It is called the Fam Cam, which is also in the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. It lets you see all of the seats with this camera, and then you can click on a seat to highlight it. And what they like to brag about is that you can see children in rear facing seats, which my baby learned that she can put stuff into her mouth for the first time while I was driving her around. And I used the fam cam to actually see that first moment. Well, that's pretty cool. I actually used it to look at you upside down because then I realized that you actually had to be right side up because it actually shows it 
upside down in the third row because of the angle of it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I wonder why my kid's face looks like upside down. It's like, that's what you'll always see. Yeah. I get why they had to do it, but it's just funny. And then hanging out in the middle row compared to a bench seat, it's so much better for like getting to the baby if you need to, looking at the baby. I had to park somewhere and I could hang out with the baby. I had so much more room than I would in a sedan or hatchback or even an SUV. And even getting into the third row, getting in and out, and even using your vacuum attachment, Siri. Okay, so we have a vacuum back there, which is super cool, and it just like worked right away. I pulled it out, pushed the button, vacuum stuff up. It's got a built-in vacuum, like that. that is winning pretty hard. And you've got like attachments hidden throughout the car, so like if I need to get to the front, right back here. We can start vacuuming right now. Just Well, we need, we need to get out and attach it to the back, but. It's vacuum. Yeah, it's very cool that it has it. <laughs> and there's also rear climate control back there. There is a screen and everything up at the top, so it is really easy to really make it the right temperature in the back, which was nice for hanging out with the baby in the back. Do we have tri-zone or dual zone? Dual zone. Nice. So now we'll get you in the driver's seat and we'll talk about looks, some handling, and then all the other fun little stuff in the minivans. Launching this. Brake boost. Oh, it doesn't like that. My advice would be to never brake boost this. So were you in rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, or all wheel drive? I don't know, Yuri. So oh. there's actually no display to tell me what all wheel drive version I'm in because this is primarily a front wheel drive vehicle, but under certain conditions, it is an all wheel drive. And they showed us some marketing material about how it goes into all wheel drive. It's seamless, you can't control it, but it's like, gets below zero, all wheel drive. Uh, zero degrees zero, Celsius. Zero degrees, a little bit slippery, all wheel drive. Or near freezing conditions, we're gonna go ahead and actuate the all wheel drive system. You put on your wiper, that means it's rain, hey, all wheel hey, drive. Hey. If we see that the driver has actuated the windshield wipers, we'll go ahead and turn the system on. I'm in all wheel drive area, yeah, I use my turn and my wipers. If we see wheel slip, if we see the electronic stability control system actuate, if we sense the vehicles on a rough road, or a steep grade, we'll go ahead and turn on the system. It's like that meme from Community where the dictator's like, you do this, you go to jail. This, yeah. go to jail. Yeah, I'm gonna use my turn signal. I got my all wheel drive. I'm gonna wireless charge, all wheel drive. Just kidding, those last two are not did, real. Did you hit the brakes? Uh, no, I didn't, but all do you want drive. me to? There we oh, go. It was, it was uh, evasive maneuver, all wheel drive. Large steering inputs into the steering wheel. We'll assume that the customer is perhaps performing an evasive maneuver trying to avoid an obstacle on the road, we'll go ahead and turn the system on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't that throw you off if you're like ready to evasive in like front wheel drive? You're like, now the characteristics of handling have changed. I'm not prepared. <laughs> yeah, so it is a little bit weird, but that's how they decided to do this. And honestly, it is seamless. Like I haven't noticed yeah. it. It's and just, that's what they say that this does. And they have a cool drift shot if it's drifting in the snow, so. Oh yeah, and if it's below zero, it'll automatically be on zero degrees. We, we already know that. <laughs> I'm just saying zero degrees Celsius for the Americans that don't understand what zero degrees Celsius really is. And then what mode are you in? Comfort, sport, normal, eco? I'm in minivan mode, Yuri, because there's no drive modes in this. Which makes sense. You get in and you just drive the freaking car. But we do have the traction off and I'm going to send it into Cliche Corner with the traction off and okay, I can feel the traction still doing something because it's definitely not fully off. And you know what? Not bad. Wet day outside today. Uh, it's definitely super hot outside as well. And under steery, it's, definitely a little bit weird. It's definitely no VTEC van, not, no. not even close. The VTEC van, that is the Honda Odyssey, is such a good vehicle. Yeah, for handling. Yes, if that's your thing in a minivan. And and, and crack in VTEC. Yes, because this has a severe lack of power. So I'm going to floor it. It's so slow to downshift and there's just nothing even once it picks up. Yeah, I think you really need to look at this as like the features and the cool gimmicks that are really awesome. Right. And don't worry about like the lack of going fast power because most people like who are interested don't care at all. Yeah, exactly. And this is a nine speed auto. So when you're not flooring, it's actually pretty good. And then as for comfort, suspension's good. Suspension's really good. Daily driving this, no problem. I really like the damping of it. There's nothing weird about it. On the highway, totally fine. Like The, the, bra the brakes do feel weird in this one though. Yeah, we'll get to the brakes in a second, but suspension wise, this is like totally dailyable. Like no issue, it's a minivan. Yeah, I know, it's, it's nice and comfortable, especially since it's the pinnacle. Okay, so those brakes, they're a little bit touchy. They're almost like hybrid brakes. It sounds where, like there's like nothing at first. Yeah, it's it, might, like, it might just be that the car's had a lot of wear on it. Potentially, this has seven and a half thousand kilometers and there are some scratches here and there. And I have low fuel right now. Doesn't matter, bro. You can go like 100 kilometers on low fuel light. Yeah, we should Kramer this. It, I'm, I'm dead serious. You no, can... I know. We should Kramer this we'll just for it. the rest of the video. To the gas station. Yep. Looks. They have changed some stuff since the last Pacifica that we did drive. The headlights are slightly changed. I think they look nice, but you pretty much always have your full headlights on, not just your DRLs. And then when you try to turn your DRLs on, your screen goes too dark. 
So right. then you got to turn that knob up to brighten it up, but then at night, it's like a flashlight in your face. Yeah, so I think Stellantis still has not figured out the dimming and the actual like sensor for the lights and stuff like that. Every other company has seemed to have figured this out, yeah. but in every Stellantis vehicle that we're always in, we seem to always have this issue where we have to like brighten it up with the actual slider. Yeah, which sucks because then you're not driving around with your daytime running lights on, which means you don't have the cool tail lights on. And this has really awesome tail lights that come around and connect all the way across. Yeah, I mean, this is a really good looking minivan overall. Yeah, and then what's really cool is there's like a nice body line that goes all the way across and then at the back it swoops down and connects perfectly with the bumper and comes all the way around. And this paint, and I'm sick of burgundy cars, so but <laughs> in perfect lighting, it's a nice burgundy. And what do you think of these wheels? They're kind of okay, I guess. They're not like fantastic, but they're nice. Dude, for minivan wheels, I think these are great. Yeah, I'm kind of just waiting for hybrid -y wheels to get on minivans because those look so good on minivans. No way, man. These are like some weird budget, like Alfa Romeo wheels, sort of. I, I see that. Okay, what would be the Continental recommended tire for Pacifica all-wheel drive pinnacle? The Cross Contact LX Sport. And then we do have a lot of chrome on this, but a lot of it is like a satin chrome. So that looks classy, but not cheesy. Yeah, totally fine with it. And then as for daily driving it, we do have a little bit of like lane departure assist, but we don't have that cool Maserati Alfa Romeo Jeep Grand Cherokee L perfect radar cruiser. You just put your hands on the wheel lightly and it'll keep you in your lane. Yeah, it's, it's just okay. It just sucks that like you figure you're going on long road trips, you want to have that in a minivan, but there's no option for that. But driving position is great. Yeah, driving position is great. This armrest is nice. There's like a lot of compartments here, compartments underneath, so you can put purses and stuff there. We do have some wireless charging, USB and USB-C plugs, cup holders that'll fit a cup just fine. Visors. Three, two, one. Full pass, great job. And then as for some other assists, we do have blind spot monitoring, which is pretty loud, <laughs> but it's good because you don't want to like hit stuff in your blind spot. And then we do have parking assist, which actually works really well. I use that on a busy street and it parked me just fine. And then we do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It is optionally wireless, so you don't actually have to use it wirelessly. You can just plug it in. And the infotainment is the new Uconnect 5, just like in the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. It is slightly different. It's pretty easy to use, just like a nice upgrade. We do have reverse 360 cameras, but you don't get to see the back wheels, which kind of sucks, and it's not like the most high res. One of the biggest differences that I noticed with Uconnect 5 versus the previous gen is the resolution of the screen. Yeah, everything looks nicer, and it is pretty quick. Yeah, pretty quick, depending on what you're trying to do. If you're using your satellite radio, it's a little bit slow to change between stations. Yeah, and there is a serious lack of hard buttons, but lucky for us, we can swipe down where you can have a lot of favorites and stuff, so that makes it... <laughs> a lot better and then we do have hard buttons for all our climate which is very important especially in a minivan like you don't want to be tinkering with that when you've got a bus load of kids yes exactly and the other thing you don't want to be tinkering with is cleaning all this gloss black so i wish they wouldn't have included this pinnacle though this is for Bro, luxury minivan they people. have all this wood trim just put it here too yeah but they can't layer wood on wood well they should figure something out more satin chrome. And then how about the materials on this dash and everything? They're nice and soft. And then we've got this like dark saddle brown stitching that matches this dark wood, which is kind of old people wood. It, it definitely is old people wood. Uh, the materials themselves actually feel really good. I feel like some of it looks a little bit cheap. Like this part up on the dash, it doesn't feel cheap, but I feel like it looks a little cheap. But like the material on the seats and everything is like really good. The quiltedness and they're all ventilated and heated seats. So that's really nice. Yeah, and the actual ventilation works really well. And sorry everybody, if our audio is a little screwed up, it is actually starting to pour right now. Yes, we film when we film. The weather has been tricky sometimes. Very tricky today. So with all the little features out of the way, let's get to the price. Well, this Pinnacle is $68,785. Canadian. Which is actually kind of not a lot of money, but also kind of a lot of money. Yeah, considering how much luxury you're getting. <laughs> sorry, it's raining. Considering it's how much boring. luxury you're getting compared to a bunch of SUVs and stuff out there. Yep. Like you're getting a lot of bang for your buck storage wise, especially for family stuff. And personally, I don't mind the look of minivans, especially compared to a lot of SUVs. I would much rather have this. And I'm actually very grateful to have all-wheel drive right now because it is like, this is gonna flood soon. Yeah, hey man, wipers on, all-wheel drive is on. The windshield wipers, we'll go ahead and turn the system on. Exactly. We know, it's seamless. And if you're shopping for a new Chrysler Pacifica and you live in the United States, click the True Car link below. There's a discount when using the Straight Pipes link. You can also shop for a used Chrysler Pacifica using True Car. And if you live in Canada, there's a Car Help Canada link below. So overall, how was your time in this minivan? 
10 out of 10. I am definitely going to embrace minivan life when it comes time for me to actually buy my own family car. So we're actually gonna do a couple more minivans in the future. We're gonna do the Kia Carnival, which is a very hotly anticipated vehicle. Very excited for that. The new Sienna looks like super, super awesome. And it's only available as a hybrid, which is very interesting. This compared to all of my SUV long-term testers, minivan hands down i just love it okay so you should probably buy a minivan when you're done all your long-term testers if i if that ever happens so looks wise image wise would you be able to drive a minivan as a daily i or, mean because you right now you got the e63s wagon yeah but say it wasn't a fast wagon i mean i'd still really like the wagon you'd rather say you had a volvo wagon instead of a minivan would you be cool with that or would you rather go minivan i think i'd rather the volvo wagon i think volvo wagon looks awesome and then would your wife mind a minivan or is she anti-minivan she had a minivan also growing up but I feel like she's kind of anti-minivan right now. Okay, my wife is pro-minivan and anti-wagon. Okay. She hates wagons. Yeah. Let us know what you think of minivans. Are you gonna get one or would you rather just get an SUV for all your family stuff? Or are you crazy enough to just get a sedan or like a hatchback? And subscribe for more of the minivan pipes. Mini pipes. <laughs>